a Welsh OnlyFans model by the name of Amy Evans, faced criminal charges following an altercation with her ex-boyfriend at her home in the village of Aberfan on June the 5th of 2023. 27-year-old Evans was said to have been in a violent and toxic relationship with Lewis Goff prior to their breakup, which became official a short time before the incident. In fact, on multiple occasions, local police have been called about the man's threatening and abusive behavior towards Evans. As a consequence for past offenses, Goff was subject to a restraining order that banned him from any form of contact with his former partner. On the day in question, however, he showed up at Evans' home and confronted her while filming himself with his cell phone. The woman repeatedly asked him to leave, but he refused. In what she would later label a last resort effort to make Goff leave the house, Evans reportedly wielded a steak knife and threatened to use it against him. During the altercation, the woman left a visible mark on Goff's chest. In the aftermath, she was arrested and eventually brought to trial at Merthyr Tidville Crown Court. Evans said she'd acted out of panic when she used the knife against her ex, who'd often lashed out in violence in the past. The presiding judge emphasized that Goff bore a high level of responsibility for being present at the home despite being asked to leave. However, acknowledging Evans' wrongdoing, the judge highlighted that she'd taken the law into her own hands and should be punished accordingly. The mother of two was given an 18-month community order involving a specific rehab program tailored for women and also instructed to pay court costs. Number 10. Sarah Alexander Law enforcement in Des Moines, Iowa were called to a home on Southwest 17th Street for a report of a shooting on the afternoon of May the 8th of 2017. Officers found the shooting victim, 49-year-old Anthony Hartman, in the basement. Having sustained multiple gunshot wounds, he was pronounced dead at the scene. The man had a criminal history that included domestic abuse offenses, though at the time of the shooting he didn't pose an immediate threat of violence according to the police. Rather, he'd been gunned down by his stepdaughter, 29-year-old Sarah Alexander, whom he'd abused on a consistent basis, along with the rest of the family, for years. Per the man's son, Addison, he would regularly use household tools from screwdrivers to chainsaws to attack them. On one occasion, Hartman had broken his wife's hand in a fit of violence. Additionally, he hit his stepson in the head with a putty knife, inflicting a visible scar. Back in November of 2016, Hartman had been jailed on domestic violence charges before being released the following day. A few weeks later, he violated a no-contact order by showing up at the family home. He was arrested again, after which the family reportedly enjoyed six months of peace with their tormentor seemingly out of their lives. Alexander joked with her mother that she would kill Hartman if he ever showed up at the house again, as he did on the day of the shooting. Unbeknownst to Alexander, the no-contact order against Hartman was lifted only days prior. He'd apparently come to retrieve his tools in order to fix his car. However, he was immediately confronted in the basement by Alexander, who'd already decided to kill her stepfather and was just waiting for the right moment, according to prosecutors. In court, Alexander expressed remorse for her actions and pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter and reckless use of a firearm causing serious injury. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison for her crimes. Number 9. Elizabeth Rudavsky Canadian woman Elizabeth Rudavsky's tumultuous marriage turned tragic when she fatally stabbed her husband in self-defense in 2003, only to discover that he was actually a woman wearing prosthetic genitals. Rudavsky had met the individual she knew as Angelo Headington while the latter was living at a Glencoe area farm recuperating from a back injury. At the time, Radavsky was traveling to different farms in the area to sell dog tags. Soon after, the start of their whirlwind romance, however, petty arguments and minor disagreements between the couple escalated into full-bore domestic violence, with Headington acting as the primary aggressor. Leading up to the altercation that claimed Headington's life, 27-year-old Radavsky was being abused again. She'd been cornered by her spouse prompting her to grab a 12-inch butcher knife to defend herself. 
as she attempted to escape, the woman plunged the blade into Headington's abdomen in what was later deemed a clear act of self-defense. Paramedics reportedly discovered Headington's prosthetic genitals while en route to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. Born Angela Headington, she concealed her true identity from Radavsky throughout this seven-month relationship Claiming a previous girlfriend had gotten angry and severely burned her manhood, Eddington would routinely request to keep the lights off during intimate moments in order to maintain her deception. She'd posed as a man since the age of 14 and allegedly abused multiple other partners, both male and female, through starvation, beatings, and threats to loved ones. Radavsky, who initially faced a second-degree murder charge for the fatal stabbing, was absolved after investigators learned of the circumstances that preceded the incident. Number 8. Cody Pines In September of 2015, a blind high school student was attacked at Huntington Beach High School in California. The victim, 16-year-old Austin Higley, was accosted by a bully outside the doors to the school. A 30-second cell phone video, which amassed over 26 million views in the incident's wake, showed Higley repeatedly getting punched in the head by the ruffian. Then suddenly, another student rushed into frame and knocked the bully to the ground with a single blow. Higley's rescuer, identified as 17-year-old Cody Pines, could be heard asking the bully why he was hitting a blind kid before issuing a stern warning to leave him alone in the future. Higley's attacker, who wasn't named, later claimed on social media that he was unaware of the teen's visual impairment. He was charged with misdemeanor battery and released to his parents while Pines wasn't arrested for the punch that he threw. The following month, Higley and Pines appeared together on Dr. Phil's show which was the first interview they gave in connection with the incident. Higley thanked his hero of a classmate, telling Pines, I feel like you saved my life, as the pair embraced. Number 7. Georgina Sally Challen On the morning of August the 14th of 2010, Georgina Sally Challen took a hammer to her husband Richard 20 times killing him in the kitchen of their home in the affluent suburban village of Claygate in Surrey, England. The 56-year-old then covered the man's body and left a note that read, I love you, Sally. The following day, Sally drove her son to work, her husband's lifeless yet undiscovered remains still lying on the kitchen floor. She subsequently drove to Beachy Head in East Sussex with the intention of never returning. However, before she could bring her deadly plan to fruition, she was arrested and charged with Richard's murder. Following a week-long trial at Guildford Crown Court in June of 2011, Sally was convicted of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. The woman later appealed the verdict, citing her husband's long-standing abusive tendencies. Her son David vehemently defended her, supporting the claim she made against his father. He testified that his parents' 30-year marriage had been more like a mental prison for his mother than a healthy partnership. Richard was said to have controlled the world around Sally and also allegedly cheated on her relentlessly. As David recalled, the arguments between his parents started to grow more vocal and abusive as he got older. Legislation prohibiting psychological abuse wasn't put into effect until 2015, four years after Sally's original trial. Her legal team contended that had Richard's coercive control been considered illegal at the time, it would have served as a mitigating factor for Sally, who was left with a host of undiagnosed mental health conditions as a result of the abusive relationship. While behind bars, she reportedly received treatment for bipolar disorder, dependent personality disorder, and adjustment disorder. In the end, Sally's appeal was successful. Her murder conviction was quashed, and she admitted manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility, eventually giving way to her release from prison. Number 6. Lilia Sudakova Russian Vogue model Lilia Sudakova confessed to fatally stabbing her husband, Sergei Popov, after he brought another woman to their St. Petersburg holiday flat on November the 28th of 2020. Sudakova, who'd refused the man's intimate advances earlier that night, described Popov as having been dead drunk 
when he returned from a bar with the other woman. According to the 27-year-old model, Popov attacked her, and in the struggle she inadvertently stabbed him in the chest with a kitchen knife. Despite attempting to aid him and calling for an ambulance, Popov later succumbed to the injuries. Sudakova claimed self-defense, alleging that Popov's behavior became aggressive after she declined to cook for him and his companion. Meanwhile, prosecutors argued that Sudakova intentionally stabbed her husband and disregarded his attempts to quell the situation. They contended that her violent outburst had centered around jealousy, stating that she acted out of rage when Popov was accompanied by another romantic interest. Sudakova's mother, Irena, claimed that her daughter endured long-term domestic abuse and acted in self-defense during the incident, citing witness testimony to that effect. The model's friend, Karolina Pavlovskaya, echoed similar sentiments describing Sudakova as a victim of continual abuse at the hands of Popov. In January of 2022, the woman's grievous bodily harm charges were upgraded to murder, which could carry up to 15 years in prison as punishment. As of the latest updates, Sudakova was on house arrest while awaiting trial. Number 5. Alexandra V. In December of 2019, it was reported that a French Roman Catholic priest had been brutally murdered by a teenager whom he was accused of assaulting. The priest in question was identified as Roger Matasoli, who was 91 at the time of his killing. Matasoli had long been the subject of abuse allegations but nevertheless was allowed to stay within the church. He was moved around to different locations over the course of his decades-long career and he remained on the church payroll until 2018, which church officials attributed to an ecclesiastical error. The individual who killed Matasoli was identified only as Alexandra V, a 19-year-old who'd been working as a housekeeper at the priest's home in northern France. Matasoli allegedly abused both Alexandra and his father, along with at least two others, in a final act of retribution. Alexandra wielded a crucifix and rammed it down the priest's throat, killing him. He was caught by police while attempting to flee the scene. The teen was charged with murder, torture and resisting arrest, though French authorities were reportedly viewing the case as a revenge killing. No further updates have been provided as of December of 2023. Number 4. Valérie Bacot Valérie Bacot, from the central eastern part of France, was 12 years old when her alcoholic mother sparked up a relationship with a truck driver by the name of Daniel Paulette. Bacot's mother was described as an authoritarian who often lashed out in violence towards her. In December of 1992, Paulette moved in with the family. It was around that time that he started abusing Bacot and four years later, he was behind bars for assault on a minor. He was released within two and a half years, after which the repeated assaults on Bacot started up again. At the age of 17, she was impregnated by her stepfather, prompting her mother to allegedly exile her from the house, though her mother later denied it. Bacot moved in with Paulette in the neighboring town of Baudemont, and he subsequently forced her into marriage. Over the next several years, Bacot continued to suffer relentless abuse at the hands of her stepfather-turned-husband. Paulette routinely beat the woman, attacked her with a hammer, and brandished a firearm in her direction, threatening to shoot her and her children if she didn't obey him. He even allegedly forced her into commercial intimacy with other truck drivers while he directed her through an earpiece. On March the 13th of 2016, after more than two decades of torment, Bacot took matters into her own hands. She retrieved a gun that Paulette kept hidden in the family car. Recounting what transpired next, Bacot later stated that she remembered closing her eyes and pulling the trigger as she sat behind Paulette in the vehicle. The bullet, fired from point-blank range, killed the man instantly. She enlisted the help of her two teenage sons, as well as her daughter's boyfriend, to bury Paulette's body in the woods. After that, Bacot reported her husband missing to the police. The case went cold for the next year and a half, until Paulette's remains were discovered in La Clayette on October the 3rd of 2017. Bacot and her children were arrested shortly thereafter. 
the woman faced a murder charge while her sons were accused of concealment of a corpse and not reporting a crime. In juvenile court, the teens were ultimately given suspended six-month prison sentences. Bacot went to trial during the summer of 2021, facing the possibility of spending the rest of her life behind bars. She told the court about Paulette's long-standing campaign of abuse and largely won the sympathies of the general public, leading to more than half a million people signing a petition demanding her exoneration. In the end, Bacot was sentenced to four years in prison, three of which were suspended. After spending a year in pre-trial detention, the woman was allowed to return home. Number 3. Willie Mae Harris In May of 2020, Willie Mae Harris, aged 72 and now blind, was released on parole after spending over 34 years in the Wrightsville Women's Facility in Arkansas for the 1985 murder of her abusive husband, Clyde. After clemency proceedings were initiated in 1998, the Arkansas Parole Board finally approved her release on May the 14th. Despite her original 140-year sentence, Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson announced plans to commute her sentence earlier in the year, paving the way for her eventual parole. During her original murder trial, Harris testified that the fatal shooting of her husband was the culmination of years of abuse that she'd suffered. She claimed that the man constantly issued her death threats during the course of their marriage. On the day of the shooting, Clyde allegedly forced himself on her, triggering a contentious argument. Harris claimed that she was hitting her husband with a gun, attempting to defend herself when the weapon inadvertently discharged, killing him in an impassioned plea to the jury. The woman maintained her innocence, stating, You all believe me, I did not shoot my husband. Upon her release decades later, Harris's daughter expressed relief and joy, revealing that she'd begun to fear her mother's incarceration might span the rest of her life. Harris made plans to reside in Texas with her two daughters, pending decisions by both Arkansas and Texas authorities regarding the specifics of her parole. Today's topic was requested by Look Who's Watching 9326 and Vodivan TTV. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Gloria L'Oreal Reyes Arizona woman Gloria L'Oreal Reyes pulled up to a home in Phoenix in her red Nissan Ultima on the morning of February the 21st of 2022. According to witness testimony, the 33-year-old shouted, I am here to take his life. As she exited the car and approached the house, Reyes' mother heard her say that she'd come to kill the monster, so she didn't initially allow her inside. Her daughter fired a shot at the ground, then pointed the gun directly in her face. She opened the door, at which point Reyes barged inside, made a beeline for the kitchen and fired two more rounds. Other family members heard the commotion and rushed to the kitchen where they observed Reyes standing over her father's lifeless body. Reyes, who was homeless at the time, then called 911 to report the incident, telling the emergency dispatcher point-blank that she'd shot her father. The latter was pronounced dead at the scene, so Reyes was arrested on several charges, including first-degree premeditated murder, first-degree burglary, and six counts of discharging a firearm in a city limit. While speaking with investigators, Reyes claimed that her desire to kill her father stemmed from the repeated abuse he'd inflicted when she was a child. A bail was set at her reported $1 million, but no further updates were provided. When Vengeance Goes Wrong is lined up for you still, right after number one, in case you missed that release a while back. Stick around if you'd like. Number 1. Melek Ipek Turkish police were contacted by a woman who claimed to have shot her husband in self-defense at their Antalya residence on January the 7th of 2021. Upon arrival at the scene, officers found the caller, 31-year-old Melek Ipek, with obvious signs of trauma. Earlier, Melek's husband, Ramazan, handcuffed her and struck her with the butt end of a rifle. He also allegedly threatened to kill her along with their two daughters. Ramazan fired the gun at a window next to the victims, causing it to shatter. He then left the house, vowing to 
killed him upon his return. About an hour later, Ramazan came back to find that Melek had gotten hold of his rifle, which went off, killing the man following a brief struggle. Melek had visible facial wounds as well as prominent injuries all over her body. Nevertheless, she was detained and charged with her husband's murder, triggering widespread outrage. Ramazan, it emerged, had regularly been abusive towards Melek throughout their 12-year union. Fortunately, in April of 2021, a Turkish court ruled that the shooting did in fact constitute self-defense, so Melek was released. Number 7. Joanne Hemingway In June of 2017, an argument between two neighbors in Hull, England, escalated to physical violence before ending in murder. There had been a history of bad blood between Angela Burkett, a woman in her early 50s, and 39-year-old Joanne Hemingway, both of whom lived on the same road. Burkett, who'd struggled with substance abuse, reportedly regarded herself as the Queen of Beverly Road and, by some reports, resented Hemingway as a potential challenger to her self-given title. Earlier in the day, on June the 29th, the latter had gotten the best of Burkett in a fight witnessed by several other neighbors. Burkett then exacted her revenge, aided by her partner, Glenn Foster. The pair were armed with knives and Foster also carried a baseball bat as they charged Hemingway. She used a scaffolding pole to try and fend off her attackers, but the skirmish ended with her being stabbed through the chest. She succumbed to the wound and the authorities initially charged Foster with the murder, a narrative that Burkett was willing to support. When the man wrote to her asking her to reveal the truth of how the altercation had unfolded, she refused to do so. However, in the massive investigation that followed, the authorities concluded that Burkett had dealt the killing blow in what multiple media outlets would describe as a revenge killing. A judge at Hull Crown Court told Burkett it was absurd for her defense to claim that someone else had stabbed Hemingway while also describing the victim as a much-loved daughter, sister, and mother. Burkett was sentenced to life in prison with parole available after a minimum of 20 years. In April of 2020, while serving her sentence, Burkett passed away after suffering from pneumonia after contracting COVID-19, with reports indicating that she'd refused to take precautionary measures, even though her health was already vulnerable due to hepatitis C. Number 6. Dylan Harrison in October of 2021, an officer with the Alamo Police Department in Georgia was killed during his first day on the job in a vengeful shooting perpetrated by a man whose friend he'd recently arrested. On the evening of October the 8th, Officer Dylan Harrison stopped an unnamed suspect for a traffic violation in the parking lot of a Circle K across from the police station. The suspect refused to identify himself and a physical struggle ensued in which the officer used his taser on him. The suspect was then arrested and booked into Wheeler County Jail. Upon hearing about the incident, an associate of his, 43-year-old Damian Luke Anthony Ferguson, staked out the police station. At around 1 a.m. on October the 9th, he allegedly ambushed and gunned down Harrison in front of the building. He was survived by a wife and a six-month-old daughter and was the first Alamo officer to have been killed in the line of duty. After a brief search, the state of Georgia's SWAT team apprehended Ferguson and an investigation into the alleged cop killer is ongoing. Number 5. Casey McKinney On February the 13th of 2018, a woman was gunned down by her ex-boyfriend at an apartment complex on Barton Road in Redlands, California. At the time of the shooting, 31-year-old Casey McKinney was at the residence with her new boyfriend, whose identity wasn't released, and her four-year-old son. Riverside man Bradley Thomas Wass, aged 33, is believed to have sought revenge on the woman after she'd broken up with him. Wass opened fire on McKinney, inflicting fatal injuries to which she succumbed at the scene, but also took aim at her child and boyfriend. The other man was able to grab the baby and escape the gunfire by jumping from a second-story balcony. Both survived, with the child subsequently placed in protective custody. The authorities launched a search for Wass and a few days later found him dead at the Indian Hills Golf Club in Miraloma. The cause of his demise was reported as a gunshot wound, which appeared to have been self-inflicted. Number 4. David Allen a man from the Northern Moor area of Manchester was brutally assaulted on June the 4th of 2020 following a series of events that was set in motion after he'd pushed a teenager off his bike. The incident was pieced together by the authorities from surveillance footage and witness testimonies. At some point, 
three teenagers had cycled very close to 23-year-old David Allen as he was walking on the pavement. Allen reached out and pushed the one nearest to him, causing him to fall off his bike before continuing towards the Tesco Express. The teenager's mother, who'd presumably been informed of the incident in the meantime, then pulled up in front of the Tesco in a Nissan Duke and confronted Allen. He started walking away from her, but she followed him and flagged down a van driven by 30-year-old Aidan Matthews, an acquaintance of hers, telling him that Allen had hit her son. An altercation ensued between the two men in which punches were exchanged that left Matthews with a bloodied face. The latter drove off and picked up his friend, 33-year-old Joseph Stott, from a nearby address. Together, they tracked Allen down and proceeded to viciously beat him. Matthews struck him repeatedly with a large metal torch and Stott forcefully kicked him multiple times as he lay on the ground. The pair then left him in the street and fled the scene, colliding with another car as they drove away. Allen succumbed to his extensive injuries the following day. One of the strikes had caused his skull to rotate so violently that the right artery inside the lower part of his skull near to the brainstem was torn and caused him to immediately lose consciousness. There were 18 separate areas of bruising to his head as well as internal bruising within the scalp, forehead, face, chin and jaw. Matthews and Stott were sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 18 and 16 years served, respectively. Number 3. Roy Jaggers In August of 2021, a Las Vegas man was viciously for hours before being executed and abandoned in the Nevada desert. 27-year-old Roy Jaggers sometimes babysat for neighbor Heather Pate, also 27. She came to believe that Jaggers had hurt her son although the claim has been disputed by the man's parents and he didn't have a criminal history. A former contractor, he'd had to rely on side work as a result of the pandemic. Instead of reporting her suspicions to the authorities, Pate put together a gruesome revenge plot with the help of then-boyfriend Kevin Dent and former boyfriend Brad Men, both in their late 30s. On August the 1st, she lured Jaggers to her home, where he was confronted, then attacked by her and Dent. According to reports from the sheriff's office, Jaggers was handcuffed and thrown into Pate's car, after which the couple drove to meet up with men in the unincorporated town of Pahrump. The trio took Jaggers to a remote desert area where they spent hours assaulting him with weapons that included an axe, a baton, and knives, as well as a blowtorch. His tormentors then drove Jaggers about 25 miles to Cathedral Canyon where they stripped him of his clothes and forced him to walk off a cliff. Afterwards, he was shot multiple times. His body was found later in the day and Pate, as the last person to have been seen with him, became a person of interest. She and Dent were arrested after the police searched their homes. Men was taken into custody as well and he ultimately produced the murder weapon. The trio was charged with murder, kidnapping, battery with substantial bodily harm, and conspiracy to commit murder. Their trials are ongoing, but prosecutors stated an intention of seeking the death penalty for men who had acted as the trigger man. Number 2. Emma Robinson In October of 2021, two brothers were convicted of attempted murder for firing a shotgun at a woman in Westerhope, Newcastle, England. On October the 3rd of the previous year, at about 10 p.m., Emma Robinson was cooking cottage pie in her kitchen. As she was facing the microwave, the window behind her suddenly shattered, and she felt something strike her in the back, arm, and the side of her face. It would later be determined that what Robinson had experienced was the impact of a shotgun blast. She survived, but her body was peppered with buckshot. Brothers Thomas and James Lee, both in their 20s, would be identified as suspects in the shooting's aftermath. Local authorities investigated the matter and reported that they'd opened fire on the home out of revenge because they'd been involved in an argument with Robinson's son. Roughly 26 hours after shooting her, the Lees fired a shotgun at their cousin, Jordan King, with whom they'd also been embroiled in a dispute. He also survived and the shooters were found guilty of attempting to wound him with intent. The prosecutor, who'd successfully argued for attempted murder in Robinson's case, pointed out that given the circumstances, the Lee brothers would have undoubtedly noticed that there was someone in the kitchen. Number 1. Denise Nagrotsky A middle-aged woman was sentenced to 10 years in prison in October of 2015 for attempting to hire a hitman to kill three people. 52-year-old Denise Nagrodsky's daughter had been in a relationship with an abusive man who'd reportedly caused her to suffer a miscarriage while she was pregnant with twins. Nagrodsky began searching for someone to make the ex-boyfriend, as well as those close to him, pay for the physical and emotional anguish her daughter had experienced. 
The vengeance plot involved hiring someone to kill her daughter's ex along with his sister and her boyfriend. An intelligence division of the NYPD discovered that Nagrodsky was looking for a hitman and informed New Jersey law enforcement. An undercover detective for the State Police Violent Organized Crime Control South Bureau posed as the prospective assassin and met with Nagrodsky at the Phillipsburg Mall in Lopotcon on November the 21st of 2014. The woman said that she wanted her daughter's ex-boyfriend to be burned alive and told that she was the one responsible for it. The man's sister and her partner were each to be shot twice in the head, with the execution method described by Nagrotsky as once for each twin. Since she couldn't provide the gunman with a firearm, she settled for him bashing their brains in and set in the house where they lived together ablaze. She then gave him $500. On their second meeting, which occurred a few days later, she provided the undercover detective with photos of the victim, a map to their home, and an additional $500. Nagrotsky was arrested shortly after leaving the meeting, but had the authorities not intercepted the murder-for-hire plot, three people would have most likely lost their lives. Thanks for watching. If you were given the chance to get payback on anyone who wronged you in the past, would you take revenge or forgive them? Let us know in the comments section below.